everybody. Welcome to Rana's Radar. Here it is another weekend on the channel and today I'm in Lakeland, Florida for the Lake Mirror Classic Car Show. Nick, how are you today? I'm doing great. This is a fabulous show and it's my first time here. How long have you been coming? Uh, this is my first time. I know the organizer quite well. And this year is the um, memorial or celebration, if you will, of 70 years of General Motors and their um, Motorama, which you see over there in the bus. And at that time, they had the four 1953 uh, cars that General Motors made. Yep. One being uh, my, my Buick, uh, the Cadillac, the Oldsmobile Fiesta. That's why you guys are all surrounding the feature lineup. Right. So we, they, they really were very anxious for us to be here to, to complete the whole collection which the first time they had the show was in 1936, right here in, um, in Lakeland. And uh, then they redid the, uh, the bus that you see there, yep. which was their advertising mechanism, because in those days there wasn't any television. Now, Nick, we saw the future liner, and um, there's going to be a link, everybody, for the detailed interview of that. Mm -hmm. But you have a beautiful Buick behind you. This is the Buick Skylark. Buick Skylark. Let's have a look at that in detail. Would you like to? Okay. How long have you had it for? Uh, I've had it now about four years. Four years. And um, before you got it, was did it need it to be restored or did you restore it? No, this is original. This is all original? Yes, it's a 22,000 mile car. Um, in the beginning, my uh, a friend of my mother's had it and she took it to Europe, where I come from. And, um, and then when we moved to America, uh, her friend died sadly, and left it to her as an as a inheritance. And so we had it. I took this car to my uh, graduation in high school, wow. 1966. And then uh, afterwards, I had to go to Vietnam. I was drafted in the uh, Air Force. And um, so I, my mom sold the car. And I tra traced it down to the fellow in Michigan who had bought it. And I bought it back from him uh, four years ago. Wow, Dick, you have given us so much information there. And so as a matter of fact, but you have a beautiful classic here in all its original glory. Yes. It's never been touched, it's never been restored. Well, it's, it's been well maintained. It's been very well maintained. <laughs> yes. It's been very well maintained, everybody. Yes. And the other amazing thing that I love, because you're here on Rana's Radar, is that you took this to graduation and to high school. Yes. So a lot of memories there. Yeah. But then mum sold it. Yes. And only four years ago, you were able to track it back down and what's fascinating that even in those all that time that has passed whoever had kept it still maintained it so well absolutely yeah. how did you find this four years ago uh, quite quite by accident actually I, I had bought uh, one that was needing repair and, and restoration and it was in that process unfortunately I probably didn't do it with the right individual and in the middle of all that I suddenly saw this car for sale Wow. And, um, I called up and we did the tracking and the numbers and all that and that's how we found out. Yeah. You, well, how did you feel that day when you uh, found it? It was ecstatic. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. That's my car here that yep. I had since the beginning. And the Oldsmobile that's over there, which is called the Fiesta, mm -hmm. which is one of the four, you know, 53 cars. That gentleman uh, bought, he was second owner. He bought it, dated his wife in it, then got married in it, and he had his first child, uh, took her to the hospital and, and had their first child in that car. I have to check that out, so, so you'll have to introduce really, me to I that. I would be glad to, yeah. <laughs> I, it's quite amazing to not only see 53 cars like this, yes. but to also have, you know. The actual owners yeah, here, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah. Let's have a closer look here at the 1953 Buick Skylark. I mean, wow. This car was um, designed by Harvey Earl, who was the famous designer for General Motors. And they took the um, uh, Buick Roadmaster, basically, the basic Roadmaster, and they took it off the line, they modified it, and added every imaginable uh, luxury? luxury that you could have in a car, more even than the Cadillac. And um, this was the first V8. This is the first car with a 12-volt battery. Wow, can we have a look at, on, under the hood? Sure, uh, let me open it up for you. Go for it. I'm opening up the hood so she can see. I think the chrome on this car probably weighs more than um, most cars do. <laughs> but this is just magnificent, everybody. Before we have a look at the engine compartment, I just want to show everyone the grills here. I will be careful of that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Look at this. The first V8. Yes. 
first 12 volt battery. Wow. And look at the way that battery was. Where is this battery? I'm just trying to. This is the battery. It's on this here. side. Someone had brought their doggy here, and unfortunately, right in front of um, Nick's Classic. So let's have a look. Yes, Antonio. I'm fine. Let me call you back. I got, I'm in an interview right now. I'll call you right back. Yes. Okay, so talk to me. What, this engine is a V8 engine? Yes, it's called a nail head. Very famous. First one. Wow. The windows, the top, everything runs off hydraulic. Okay. You think it's electric, but it's hydraulic. <laughs> For 1953, that was yes. really ahead of its yes, time. Yes. And that was the year that General Motors was really trying to make its yes, mark. This was their 50th anniversary car. Okay. And they wanted to show all out how they could... Really and, and the direction they were heading. Yes. And I think they did that really well. They did, they did marvelous. This car, uh, there were 1,600 of these cars made. 1,609, I think. Wow. Yeah. This Let's have a look. If Jean doesn't mind, we can go in and say hello to her as well. And Absolutely. Have a look at the interiors. Yeah. <laughs> have a look at that. All original. Jean, I must say, you look fabulous inside this classic. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and it's, the seats are very comfortable. Now, has the interior been no, restored? No, no. No. This is just amazing to have this in such mint condition, everybody. Yeah. And we drive it. And you, okay. We drove it here. <laughs> uh, you, you, I think you just made my day. <laughs> For a car that has been kept uh -huh. so well. Yeah. With such little mileage, yeah. you drive this. Yes. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Once, once or twice a year, we come over this way, and that's you know adds four or five hundred miles. Whereabouts are you yeah. from? Uh, Palm City and Stewart. It's sort of down by Palm Beach, Florida. And you and you drove this that yeah. many miles. Two hours. Well, it's not much. It's only one hundred and seventeen miles. So it's not, you know, you, you add a couple of 300 miles, but, you know, cars need to be driven. Yes. The, the, these garage queens don't make it. They, um, garage queens? Hey, that's uh, the first I've heard. I've heard trailer queens, but garage queens, yeah, okay. Garage, garage queens. Um, <laughs> they need to be driven because you need to keep the, the seals, you need all lubricated, you need to keep them in operation. So like we put wreck fuel in this car, mm -hmm. which is the fuel that doesn't have any of that uh, additives, like, you know, environmentally safe additives but it keeps them from corroding the uh, the, the, the tank the lines and everything um, and what about the engine what maintenance do you do on that to keep it running well we change the oil okay just the usual year, just because it's every year and but the usual yeah we put wow. new spark plugs in it last year I think the nail um, head engines were yeah. definitely one oh, of the yeah. ones that is just well they were made to run that when they yep. made this car this car was made to drive all day literally all day at 60 miles an hour anywhere you wanted to go wow and it does let's have a look at the interiors everybody yes. take a look at all the chrome on the inside there um <laughs> and I, i'll show you a very interesting aspect of the back seat they thought about this is uh, to get into the back seat yep usually it's quite a crunch but look what happens when i pull this forward the seat goes forward wow 1953. 1953, I love it. I, I absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. Nick, can by. I take a seat inside? Absolutely. Just to have a look sure. at the dash. Absolutely. You can hold this just so I could... Um... It's okay. Wow. Jean, this is magnificent. We should, we should just leave Nick here and go for a drive, just me and her. <laughs> We wanted to drive back to the hotel, but they won't let us out of here until 3 o'clock. So. Oh, no, you're hostage. Well, I'm glad you are. That way I was able to catch you. Yeah. Loving this steering wheel. Isn't it nice, yeah? This is just absolutely loving yeah. this steering wheel. Look at this, everybody. So what were some of the features? I know that in 53 they were toying around with air conditioning. No. This one didn't happen. No, okay. no, not, they didn't have air conditioning in 53. No, they it didn't. came after that. Yep. Yeah. Um, but this, if it would, it would have been in here. For example, here you have an electric antenna. An electric antenna? Yeah. This is the antenna there. It's yep. electric, and it's original. We just finished rebuilding that. Wow. The radio is an original AM radio. When you push that little black bar oh, that says... I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell me about the radio. So the radio is uh, an AM radio. 
in, in those days they didn't have FM. Okay. And um, when you touch the black bar, it automatically seeks. Uh, no, you just this not one. On. Okay. Yeah, but if you touch that, it would automatically seek the next station that, that would come on. Wow. So you can push that, and it goes on. Because that, that's in those that, days, that is you, what we call auto tuning. Yes. When we drove around in those years, anywhere, um, you, you spent your time tuning the radio from one AM station to the next because the range is, is not good. And, and, and in addition to that, on the floor is a little button. You see the button over in the yes. left? Yes. Okay, that button is, um, is, is, does the same thing. You can tune the radio yes. just there? Yes. How convenient. When I got this car, I, I didn't know that much about it, but when I got the car and I, I got into it, I was trying to make the lights go up and down, you know, the yes. high beam and low beam, and I kept pushing the button. Couldn't understand why it wouldn't work. I said, well, we have a problem. The lights don't work. Yes. Unknown to me was that the other button is the one you use for the lights, and this one is for the, <laughs> for the radio. Yeah. Yes, there is two buttons here, everybody. But the fact that you could tune the radio just yeah. by the tap of your foot, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wow. And then we've got, what, what have we got here? So that's um, the brake? That is the, the uh, let's see, that's the brake release. Brake release, yeah. The next one over is the hood release. The and next one over there is the antenna up and down. And then we've got the wipers. And then the wipers, yes. And then over on the right you've got the key. Now, the, interestingly, another interesting thing about this car is you don't start it with the key. You don't start it with the key. No, you put it on, turn on the ignition, yep. and then you push the gas pedal. Wow. And it engages the starter when you push the gas pedal down. I had no idea that such technology, yeah. and I am going to call it technology, existed in yeah. 1953. So it's almost like the, the buttons that you push now to start your car. You know? well, well, that's exactly what it is, because with yeah. the modern day cars, you press a button, but unless um, yeah. you've got your foot on the brake, right. something right. ignites yeah. that switch. So that's the way it was, yeah. And then you have this huge chrome in the middle of it. I mean, it's lots of chrome everywhere. <laughs> it was the 50s, sir. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But other than that, it's you know pretty straightforward. Wow. And, uh, on if you come back in a little while after the judging, supposedly is finished, I am then allowed to put the windows down and put the top down. And okay. the car is, I, in my opinion, is ten times more attractive um, as a convertible with the top down than it is with the top up. Well, I'm going to try my best to make sure I come back around to this I side. Mean, it's still pretty sexy like it is. But oh, it is. It, it, it but, absolutely mm -hmm. is. But we would love to see it with the top down. And then on the back, you have the, um, I want to show your, your viewers, the windows, the, the wheels are, um, those are real wire wheels. They're not uh, cub caps. Wow. And then, and so you have a, to take them off, you have a rubber mallet, which you, you take, you, you turn those off so you can take the wheel off. And then over here is the um, spare tire. The thing is that... Um, How would this get removed? I noticed that there's two pieces. Well, it, 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 oh. <laughs> here's a, a bolt you undo and, and you take the wheel off. Wow. Uh -huh. Now, this was not standard equipment on the car. Okay. You could only obtain this uh, through the dealer. And there were two or three kits that, that they would sell, different ones. Uh, some, basically the difference is in the, pa in the pan down the bottom and how it was set up. But um, you'll notice that the Cadillac has one too. They were, they were very in vogue at that time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's good reason. The reason is that you didn't have gas stations everywhere in 1953. In Europe, we had to plan our trips, and like we'd go skiing up in the mountains for a, a week or two weeks. We had to be very careful how much we drove up in the mountains because we'd have to drive all the way back down before we could find before a gas Before you station. could find gas. Yeah. So these, this, this is what they call continental kit right. um, was, a, was an add-on, an option. A very popular one, but an option. And you could carry another tire inside, so you could actually have two spare tires oh, wow. for you know for that long trip that you might make across the desert. Um, th these cars were owned by people like um, Frank Sinatra and, mm -hmm. and, and you know all those kind of characters, and so I'm, I'm sure they didn't worry too much about flat tires. <laughs> no. And 
the thing, one of the interesting things is, is that um, when the cards are judged at, at shows and they want originality, and they actually deduct points for having a Continental kit on the car. But why? That's still from the factory. No, not from the factory. It okay. Was, it was an option by the dealer. So the dealer and would was, then have and, put and it on. Was not, it wasn't even, um, uh, the, the factory didn't uh, promote it. They, didn't, okay. like they, they sort of said you shouldn't do that, you know. Wow. Um, but everybody wanted it. Even though you would have the kit the day that you, it comes out, 1953, right. so before you even drive a mile in it. Right. It should still be part of it, but anyway, that's my two cents. I, I, I feel the same way you do, but I will tell you that I, I've had points taken off for that, yes. Okay, uh, okay. And now tell us a little bit about the judging that is happening here today. Is there different classes, or is it just... I really don't know. I, oh, yeah, it's your I'm first sure time have, here, yep. Yeah, I'm, I mean, they have different classes for cars. Our class is the GM Motorama class. Which There's is all the 1953. Cars. Yeah, yes. and, and I have to tell you, I, I've been around a lot of shows, but this is... These are the finest 1953 cars I've ever seen all together in one place. 100%. The judges no do doubt, have yeah. their work cut out for I them. I would say so, yeah. Hey, Nick, this has been absolutely fabulous, and I appreciate your time, and I wish you all the best. Well, thank you, and do come back after 12. After 12. And get a picture of this beauty with the top down. I would love to sit in I'm it with the top down. I'm very angry with this fellow because he put his top down and didn't follow the rules. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you back then. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Our chief judge, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mel Mann. Oh, what a great lineup of expert judges he's put together to judge all these incredible cars on the field. I don't envy their task. They've got a difficult task to select special cars on our show field today. Thank you. Thank you, Mel Mann. All right, everybody, let's continue on with the beautiful classics here at Lake Mirror Classic Car Show. Leo, how are you today? I'm just fine. You have a beautiful Oldsmobile behind you. Well, thank you. Before we look at it, tell me, how long have you had your classic for? Well, I worked for the man that bought it new. Okay. And in 1956, when he got rid of it, I wasn't married, so I didn't have to ask, can we afford it? <laughs> I wanted the car and I bought it. So wow. this, I've been married for 66 years, and this is the car we dated in. I love that. Yeah. And is that Karen? Is Karen here? Karen, yes. That's, that's my wife there. <laughs> I absolutely love stories like that, everybody, and you know well, that. Are, now, the Oldsmobile, um, you got it in 56. 56. Is it a 56 it's model? A, it's a 1953. It's a 53. Yeah. 1953. Um, that You've had this for 66 and years and it has never been cool. restored. It looks very original. It, it has been restored to as close as original as possible. Okay, let's have a look here in detail. Now, it's been repainted? Yes. All the expertise in the world. The only thing Around that is. Around 11 o'clock, we're going to have a The only thing that is restored original is the carpeting. They don't even the make a thread and that's for the original type carpeting. Why don't we go around okay. and then have a look Some inside the interiors as well? Okay. And before we do that, Leo, you've got so many memories in this car. Yes. Your friend was telling me there is. You guys dated. Yeah. Now, Karen is sitting there, so. Dated, you got married, and I'm guessing kids. Yeah. There is so much memories here. We, we brought our daughter home from the hospital in this car. Wow. <laughs> well, it's fair to say this car is not going anywhere. That's right. Going to my son. Wow. I love that. I mean, it, it doesn't get more sentimental than that. that that's right. It's family. It's family. So tell me about the Fiesta. The, the Oldsmobile Fiesta. The Oldsmobile Fiesta was a we one year old. We will talk about only. the special cars that come up for the In 1953, with Mr. Oldsmobile Bill had what they called their Motorama cars. cars. Mm -hmm. and for Chevy, it was a Corvette. Here with First year for the Corvette. We'll be back with that. For Buick, it was a Buick Skylark. For Cadillac, it was the Eldorado. And, as Robert mentioned, and for the Oldsmobile, the it was a Fiesta, motors, the only year that they made it. Wow. Do you know how many they made? They made 458. Down to your right. Wow. 458. It was and all made on overtime. On the right made on overtime. Now on tell overtime. me about that. What does that mean? 
that means it was that a big hit last night at when uh, we were up to the, Nash, uh, to the uh, 100th anniversary of Oldsmobile. Well, we're built. Eight we were in a parking lot, only two are in waiting to make our circle around and town in the caravan. The Museum well, in Auburn, one of the guys came out from the, they left the Oldsmobile employees come out, Thank you once again came over for being to us and he told us that his dad used to paint these. A wonderful field of automobiles and what they would do is, the they would do their eight hours of painting, Just come up and look at these race clean everything right up, take a break, and on overtime, in other words, time and a half. Yes. They came out and they painted these cars. They painted these. And so, see this this car here is different than a '53 to Oldsmobile. Okay. And as much as it has the wraparound windshield, the panoramic windshield. Wow. This Oldsmobile and the Cadillac Eldorado were the only big cars in 53 that had the ram ra panoramic wraparound windshield. Then they came out with it, and the other ones in 54 and 55. And what was the engines for the Fiesta? The, the engine is a 303 uh, cubic inch rocket engine, but the heads are just enough different that this has five more horsepower than the regular 98. Well, they had to make a difference, didn't they? Had to they? make a difference. 1953, right. the 50 that's, years that, of General Motors. That's right. <laughs> I would yeah. love to see the inside okay. of this. The, the engine? Uh, yes, the engine and then the interiors. Okay. You guys, I hope you're enjoying these videos. I sure am having a fabulous time. Keep me in the States and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's have a look at the 303 cubic inch the rocket engine. Well, a lot of people want to know what this is. The radiator? It looks like a radiator. No. That is the, the battery. battery. That's quite large. Yes. It's a first year for the 12 volt. And I can still get the battery because they make them for some of the industrial forklifts. Wow. And the battery was that big because oh, the, of the top or? No, it was the first year for the 12 volt. Yep. And so this, in order to fit this in here, that's the battery that they use. That was on. the promotion that yeah. they were doing that as was well. The battery battery it, that they use on it. It makes sense. It makes sense. Wow. And what parts of this Oldsmobile have you restored? The engine was just completely rebuilt last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, everything, well, let's see, it's been repainted twice. Okay. Transmission was gone through one time. And what about the chrome here at the, the front? The chrome was re-chromed in, in the uh, late 50s, early 60s. Now, the interiors, there's some originality still there. Yes. Everything is, everything is originally restored original interior inside this is the way it came from the factory except for the carpeting they don't even make the thread for the original carpet leo i love your glasses over there oh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> beautiful sun is it doesn't get bigger than that now the carpet here so this is the original carpet no this what was the original carpet? The original carpet was a red and white fabric, short pile of fabric. Mm -hmm. And they, we had, when we got ready to restore it, we had checked with the loom manufacturers to see if they knew anybody that would make the carpeting for us. They gave us three names, one of that does custom work, one of them responded. And so we sent her a sample of the original carpeting, and she said in order to make that, on the loom they would have to put in one color and then work it, and then the other color and work it. She said wow. we would be looking at about $5,000. Wow, just for the carpeting. Just for enough carpeting to do the one, to do this. What you've got looks fabulous. It, nobody knows the difference if we don't There you go, them. and I wouldn't have known anyway. <laughs> Um, let's have a look here at the dash and well sure. before we get there tell me about this 
So this 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 is for power windows, everybody. And, and another thing too on these, they've got the vents on the outside of the window. Interesting. Instead of the crank out like you find on these on the other ones. And and also the other factor is because they had the panoramic windshield here at the front, they put those vents yes. over here because. Yes. So we could put this window down part of the way, and we got the vent to break it, or we can turn it to bring it in. Well, that was one button you press. What's the other buttons for? This is for that window over there. Oh, you control all four. And this in here. Wow. And, and that one over there. So yeah, it's, it's hydraulic. It's all hydraulics. 1953 and to have everything in such good working condition, in such mint condition as well, it's doesn't get better than that. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. <laughs> now let's have a look here at the dash. Wow. And if you look right here, they've got a world globe in, inside the steering wheel. Now they used to, on the regular 5398s, they would also have that on the front of the hood. Oh. But on this, being it's a Fiesta, they, they have a, in Americas, North and South America, North, Central and South America, on, on, the, on the hood. Let's have a look here. No, only roughly 400 of these Buicks would have had this in 1953. 458. 458. Of the Oldsmobiles, yeah. Of the Oldsmobiles, I'm yeah. sorry. Wow. That would The other Oldsmobiles would have that world globe like you saw there instead of the Americas. Now I noticed on the dash there, if we can go back on this side. Now I'm curious. So we've got the gauge there. Right. And then what do we have here? Just the clock? This is the clock, and then the speaker for the radio. That's the speaker, yes. okay. I thought it might have been vents for air conditioning, but no, they didn't no, have no, air conditionings. No. I like it. No, I like you. it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got storage there in the middle. Yes, that's just the underneath the radio. Compartment underneath the radio. And an AM radio only? It, is, it was originally, yes. It's AM, FM now, but it was originally wow. AM only. The Wonder Bar radio that I, you notice the two buttons on the floor over there. One of them is for the headlights and the other is to change stations on my radio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just learned that today that you could change a tune, the radio, by the tap of your feet. Yeah. Doesn't get better than that. Now, Leo, you have so much memories in this as well. When you sit in it, where does it take you? Well, I've had it so many years, I guess I don't think about it anymore. I just, just, I enjoy, just enjoy it. it. I like to drive it as much as whenever the weather is nice. And feeling up to it, I like to get it out, drive it, drive it to church, drive it to wherever, and I'll go out to eat, especially. And you and, drive this around? Oh, yes. Yeah. Good for you. We drove it over here this morning. That's the reason we lost the wheel cover. <laughs> that's all right. You drive it, you yeah. enjoy it. That's, that's it. I appreciate this so much yeah. and thank you for your service. You're sure welcome. I'm glad thank I can you. do it. What are you wanting to do? Well, first, can I just say wow, everybody? Oh. Absolutely wow. Daryl, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Come stand here in front of your beautiful classic. I will do that. Thank you. Now, very luxurious. I have no idea. No, I have. It's a. I've seen something similar to it, but tell us, Daryl, what have you got here? What do we have? We have a 1940 Packard Darren Victoria convertible. This is number 11 of 35 built. This was built in uh, California, uh, and, and it was originally built for Chester Morris, who starred in the uh, detective series called Boston Blackie. Uh, back in the um, 40s and the 50s. Okay. So that was the first owner of this car. So he was a movie star and it was ordered just for him. Um, we acquired the car in uh, 
1965. So we've had the car for 58 years now, which uh, my dad actually 58 for years. 58 years in the family. So did you buy it from the movie star, or we bought it from the brother? From he the brother. He passed away, and then the brother sold the car. Okay, mm -hmm. and we, you did you know about the car before you came across it? We did not know anything about it. We ran across it, and it cuts a crazy way. It was just a wow. random day. Uh, my dad and his good friend decided to go out on a venture. They they did like maybe. Every other month, they would just jump in a car and drive to the next town and see if they could find a car for sale. That's what car guys Fun. do. Yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> so, and they did. And um, I don't know if you have time for the whole story. Oh, but, I absolutely oh, do. do. Okay, You're right. on Brian's radar. We so, want to hear the story. <laughs> so anyway, um, so they, and my dad's buddy um, knew a guy that lived in town. Okay. Uh, they had a big car collection. So he says, let's just go to his house and knock on the door. So they did. So they go to this big mansion, big gate. They roll through this guy's gate, go up to the mansion. Good thing they didn't get shot. And... Guy answers the door and he's and they say, "Hey, we hear that you got a bunch of cars uh, here." He says, "Yeah, I do." But he's, and he said, "Do you have anything for sale?" And he says, "No, I don't." But I know a guy in town that has a couple for sale. He okay. Says, I got his name and number. Would you like it? And they said, "Yes." So the guy was very nice, very cold, and gave him the name and number. And so they went back town and uh, where they were, and uh, they decided to get some lunch at the diner. Of course. So they called the number when they sat down, and the gentleman uh, answered the phone, and so they said, we hear that you had a couple cars for sale downtown. And the gentleman said, well, where are you guys located? And they said, we're at, you know, such and such diner. Yeah. And he goes, well, the cars are right underneath you in a parking garage. And, you know, under, they were there as well? They were right under him in the parking garage below Wow, them. So, okay. So weird. It was meant to be. It was meant to be, I swear. It was meant so, to anyway. be. So they said, go ahead and finish your lunch, and I'll be there in about an hour, and then I'll show you the cars. So, you know, they finished their lunch, and they waited for him to show up. And here comes this big, long, black limousine pulling up. So he rolls up, and... They walk down the steps and they walk up to the car and he rolls his window about halfway down. He goes, you guys don't look like you can afford a car. Are you guys lookers or buyers? <laughs> so, he was pretty straightforward. <laughs> he was pretty straightforward. He didn't want to waste his time. Yeah. So they said, no, we brought cash with us. We're ready to buy. So he says, all right, meet me around back. So they walk around the back and he rolls up the door and it's pitch black. You can't see anything in the uh, whatsoever. So he says, let me go in and turn on the lights and we'll I'll go back there and I'll show you the cars. So he does. They roll back there. Both cars are covered up so you can't see them. So he uncovers the first car and it's a, I think it was a 29 or 1930 Model A. Okay. Uh, nice, but you know, it's not what they were looking for. So then they uncover this one. Wow. The, the Packard. And of course, my dad knew it was a special body, but he didn't know how special it really was. Okay. Until he actually did his homework after he actually purchased the car. So uh, my dad, well, he says, what do you have to have for it? And the guy says, well, I say, he says, I need to get about 3500 for it. He said 3500 3500 So. Wow. I know it was a lot of money back then. That was a lot of money back then. But yeah. still, yeah. I mean, it's just... So, so I mean, dad, it, it, it enrages you when you hear yeah. things like that. Well, when you know what its value is now. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay. So um, so they, they walked around. They said, well, give us a minute. We'll talk about it. So yeah. he's talking with this buddy. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so he comes back and he goes, you know what? How about this? He says, I own a, my dad owned a, a color, uh, owned a TV shop where he, he sold TVs and repaired them. And he says, how about I give you three grand and a brand new console color TV? Okay, he goes, done. Done. So he bought it for three grand and a TV. Wow. <laughs> well, here's the fun part. I love it. Here's the fun part. He says, how are you going to get it home? He says, well, we actually, we can't get it home today. Um, but um, he said, well, let's see. Let me refresh myself. He says, here, what we can do. It was you know, only 50 the, plus the years ago. <laughs> he says, well, just go home. And then uh, how about we just uh, reconnect next weekend? I'll fly my private jet pick you up in your town and I'll fly you back here. And there you, you can, go. And then you can uh, drive it back. Uh, he says you can drive it or trail, whatever. So he got a free ride and a private jet and everything to boot. Wow. <laughs> so what a fun story, right? What a fun story. Yeah. Absolutely love this. Now the 40 packet, 40, yep, 1940. Yes. I've seen some earlier models of the packets and they always screamed luxury. Yes. They always, always. screamed luxury. And I love the, are always luxury. the whole, you know, bonnet, I mean, the trunk here at the front mm -hmm. is just absolutely Always the long hose just give it that strength, uh, yeah. And then, of course, you've got the front here now. But prior to 1940, they had them, um, it was a lot more carriage style, mm -hmm. still very luxurious. Right. But this is just so modern. When they started getting so more modern. 
Very streamlined yes. and very modern very as well. Very body lines, long body lines, yes. Let's, let's go in closer, Daryl, and sure. let's have a look at this in detail. Now we've got the butterfly wings for the hood. What is the engine under that? It's a flathead 356. Uh, nice. producing 160 horsepower and it's got a uh, three-speed overdrive transmission so once you wow. put it in overdrive she'll do any speed you want wow and in the 50 years have you restored this we did we restored this back in uh I'll refresh my memory i gotta refresh my memory <laughs> <laughs> it's been done since 2008 since 2008 yes. okay Wow, that dash looks pretty original though. It is, yeah. Everything is completely original on the car, just all restored back again. Wow, this is just beautiful. Oh, here's the, uh, there is the uh, cost back then, brand wow. new. Just wanna show everybody the body lines here. So smooth and the entire shape of it. Mm -hmm. So this was actually the first car with the plastic dash and the uh, leather bucket seats. Okay, because it was mm -hmm. a lot of it was just vinyl, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, now we've got on American car that is. Yes. Yeah. Suicide doors. Suicide doors. Yep. Can we open and have a look sure. inside? Absolutely. Wow, now this just screams Concourse de Elegance, everybody. Right. It really does. So much room. I and just, the colors just went with the, between the carpet and the, with the red, it just looks beautiful together. We are really happy how it turned out. You should be. And has this been restored everything, like even the colors everything. back? Yeah. yeah. And the top there, that's mechanical? I mean, you have to do it manually. Nice. Yeah. Did you want to raise the hood or? I would love to see that engine. Yeah. Wow. There it is, flathead motor. I find that every day, so. Wow. Now, Daryl, this is not the only car you've got. No, it's not. <laughs> well, tell us, what else have you got in your collection? Because I did run into you at the Daytona Turkey yes, Run. Yes, did. Which that would is be my happening... most radical car. <laughs> <laughs> which is happening pretty soon, everybody. So I will be there yeah. at Daytona on Thanksgiving weekend. Tell us, what else have you got? Well, remind us. Well, we have a tw we, our oldest is a 22 Cadillac Touring, which was also the same car that was used in the Lucio Ball episode when she, they took the big trip out to California and the Pontiac. I don't know, but I'll have, have to look it up. We have a Cadillac that Lucy wanted. She had to have a Cadillac. Well, Fred brought it home, you know, from a uh, car sales that he knew. And, of course, the car was just rigged to backfire and smoke and doors and everything was falling off the car. So, we, and the car only has, uh, I think it's 9,600 9, miles on it originally. And that's a 22 Cadillac. 22 Cadillac Touring. Okay, wow. So, that would be the oldest. And then we have, uh, we have 20s all the way through the 80s. Yep. So, a little bit earlier. But we're mainly all GM. We have... Uh, one Mopar, three Packers, and then one Bantam. One? Bantam. 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 Tell us about They're that. Built in Butler, Pennsylvania. Okay. It's an American car. It's a, a, a miniature car. Have you heard of the Austin? Yes. The Austin Bantam, they're kind of, you know, Austin, they're the same size. The style is a little different on the wheels okay. and the interior, but they're, they were the first, uh, supposed to be the first economy car, and then it just, it was so small, it didn't work out because there was really nowhere to put all your groceries or yes. anything. There's no trunk, really. And what was the year that they came out in? Uh, the Bantams were built from 30, 30, um, 38 to 42, 41 to 42. So around that, because around that time, France and Italy were making a lot of the smaller cars, right. as was the UK as well. Right. And I guess it's just... So this is the American It, it, it didn't work here. Right. In so America, it's got to be bigger and better. Yes, they yeah, always had to be bigger and better. But am I going to see you at Daytona you this year? You will see me again. And what are I'll you bringing the there? Again. You'll have the hot yeah. rod again. <laughs> hey, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Good to see you. All right, everybody, 1970 classic Porsche. Brandon, this is magnificent. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
This is magnificent. It stands out all on its own and it's drawing in so many crowds. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're fortunate the car itself kind of does it on its own. So <laughs> You can say that again. <laughs> we're so, luckily just, to, you know, lucky enough to be the caretakers for it and it's fun to bring, the, bring them out. And, so uh, tell us, Brandon, what is this exactly? So this is a Porsche, 1970 Porsche 917K or short tail um, uh, race car. Chassis number, serial number 24. Paging Theodore John Talbot. That speaker's very loud. Theodore John I'm Talbot. sure Theodore John Talbot will be able to hear. Are you in our audience? If you are, please come up to the microphone. 1970. It's so Theodore aerodynamic John for that Talbot. year. It is. And, um, you know, the, the irony of that is that that was one of the struggles this car, these cars had to begin with, is they had a little bit of aerodynamic issues um, that they finally sorted out going into this. Because this they tried style. so hard to make it? They or? actually made them, yeah, a little bit too low. So air wasn't hitting the back of the car and it was not, they, would, they wouldn't handle correctly. So they okay. finally got that sorted out um, with this model. And uh, this car was actually used as a test car leading into the 1970 24 Hours of Le Mans. Wow. And um, they would go on to be some of the most successful racing cars that Porsche uh, ever campaigned. Wow. So, is this in all its original form or has it been restored? The car has been restored, so it's a, it's the original frame um, and most of the original components, but they've been kind of refreshed and refurbished over time. And, okay. Um, you know, the fact that it, that it did never really compete uh, kind of enabled the car to be as original as it, you know, could possibly be. Wow. Without having been any accidents or torn apart. Or so let's go through some of the features. Now, we know that the engine is in the back. Correct. Is this just the front or is there something under this? Uh, that's where uh, some of your fluids and, and kind of your brake fluid and some of the adjustment points would be. So it's really, we use it there. That's where we would hook on for towing. Okay. Uh, but there's not a whole lot up in the front. And um, the, the kill switch there. Kill switch. Um, part of the, one of the unique things about the class when they would race during this time as they needed to be considered production cars. So for that to happen, there needed to be at least 25 of them. Um, they had to, uh, they almost swept everything. They had to have a passenger seat. Wow. I well didn't expect it. Compartment. Sorry, Brandon, let's yeah. leave this open for a moment. I didn't expect it to open up this way. Yeah, a little bit different than, than one might expect. It's I mean, a little bit tighter confines than, uh, than most people expect too. Like you said, there is a passenger side in here as well. And I'm going to show you guys quite tight. Yes, so nobody would ever have um, actually ridden in the passenger seat, but it was, it was all part of kind of... Just to get by those, checking the, the boxes, yes. yep, yep, way to get about the rules. Um, the top speed of the car at the time, you know, there's 230 miles an hour plus down the muscle straight uh, at Le Mans. Uh, you would add about approximately 650 horsepower, the car weighs just over 1,500 pounds. Wow. This one's naturally aspirated. Um, it was so successful in this kind of format, they brought them over to race in what was called the Can-Am series here in the U.S. Uh, with the 917 10s, 917 30s, where they actually um, kind of took the underpinnings and added a supercharger and you would get up to 1,100 horsepower on those, some of those cars. Wow. What makes the body so light? Um, the fiberglass that they used, um, this framework, is um, it's actually pressurized, so it's, it's, it's a hollow tubing. Okay. Uh, so it helps do that. There's a lot of magnesium components, you know, lightweight components um, to kind of, like I said, keep, keep the weight down on it. And, and, and you mentioned this probably already, but could you tell me again, what's that engine? It's a 12, it's basically a five liter, 12, 12 cylinder uh, motor. So about over 600 horsepower. Yes, That's about 650 it's horsepower. It's been modified. Okay, wow. Air cooled. So that big thing on top uh, would be the fan, so it would blow air in and cool the cool motor. Why is this engine taking so much space? Just because it's huge. Okay. I mean, yeah, with 12 cylinders. Um, oh, I see. Intake. Goes. Okay, that makes sense now. Wow. Wow. And obviously racing? Yes. This was Phil, yep. And he's raced kind of internationally. High velocity stacks though, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. 
Line 17. Line 17. Yes, Oh, that music, the music is, is very, very distra- loud. I'm, I'm very distracted. Oh, I don't blame you. You are doing very fine. I'm. I, it's very loud, to say the least. I've been over. I'm just hoping that it would stop or slow down a little bit. So I will. You know, one of the things people always find it interesting that the car has the spare tires. So that was one of those kind of rules <laughs> that they had to have: is the luggage compartment, spare tire, passenger seat, and there had to be 25 of them. So. Wow. You would never actually use the spare, but. You think? It's there, yeah. We're just going to wait a moment and see if that music slows down a tad. Yeah. Is the cloth glass or Kevlar? It's fiberglass, yes, sir. So we're a little bit ahead of Kevlar stuff, so a little earlier than that. Well, they made it thin, though. They They sure did. So in 1969 was the first year they created the 917s, and and they Porsche kind of realized late in the game that they could work within the confines of the rules to kind of come up with this new recipe for a car. But um, they had to produce 25 of these things in a hurry. So you know, there's stories of you know the office ladies at, at Porsche laying fiberglass for the cars. It was an all hands on deck. Wow. Kind of. Um, but they did it well because together. this was one of the first earlier models that really kicked off. Yeah, so the, the 917s are kind of responsible for where Porsche, you know, yes. is recognized today within motorsport. It started, you know, some of their prototype cars. Uh, the 910s were re- earlier. They were really successful in kind of hill climb type stuff. The 908s came along. They were, you know, amazing cars in and of themselves. And this, these 917s kind of tied it all uh, together. Wow. It's, it's, it's a magnificent car, and when it comes to today's day and age, seeing it on the road, how rare is this? Uh, they're, they're pretty rare. Um, like I said, this is serial number 24. I think there were right around 30 of them uh, wow. produced. Um, of course, there was some attrition with you know wrecks and accidents and whatnot. So there's not a ton of them. Uh, we're really fortunate to have them. I just need to bring it out and show people. Well, I'm so glad that I was able to run into you. Yes. And so we could have a look at this and I could learn and find out more. I've always known about them, but I didn't know the details and had never seen the engine. But when you first open it up, it is a little bit in your face because you're like, wow, there is so yeah. much happening Yeah, you're here. riding with an engine and that's basically Pretty much. Basically it. Pretty much. <laughs> but Brendan, I appreciate this Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right on the dash there. Um, yeah, it's best Can I here. sit here at all or? Um, no? Yeah, if, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, Brandon, so talk to me about the inside. Yeah, so the inside, as you can tell, it's, it's somewhat kind of crowded. I think one of the kind of striking things is for a car that looks as futuristic as it is. You know, you see uh, a lot of the components are very analog. Um, and um, Well, this was still a race car. Yes, this was and still everything built. is just kind of purpose-built. Um, another thing to keep in mind, you know, as you're looking in the cockpit, is just imagine being in the middle of the night, like, racing in an endurance race, could be raining, you've got, you know, fogging up of that windshield. Wow. Uh, cramped. And it, the drivers were really something very special. And they do. They had these vents here? Yeah, for so air. you open the vent. I don't know how much good they did. Uh, there are not a whole lot of preacher comforts you know, inside and, and you're basically laying down almost i mean you can see where where the driving position is. yes 100 percent. and i think the, one of the things that fascinates me is the closeness of the engine and there's even a vent here yeah wouldn't that bring in the fumes into the cabin um i think at the speed you're traveling it probably would not flow that way um, it would go up the, opposite would go up the way. other way and what that would do is it would allow the air to kind of travel through what I'm talking about. the cabin from the vent on the side yeah. okay uh, but the, the, you know, the car does a good job of showcasing how kind of small in stature a lot of. <laughs> a lot yeah, of I mean, I mean, I mean, you look at the the yeah. width of the small side. Small stature, huge in, in heart. Yeah. <laughs> this has been very popular here at Lake Mira Classic Car Show. Brendan, you're going to have your work cut out for you today. This is amazing. So many people do want to see it. And I'm glad I was able to have a look on the inside. I had never seen the inside of these. I've always seen the pictures and you see it and it's it's just striking. It stands out. 
But um, at the end of the day, it's just a race car, isn't it? It is. It's just a race car. And for them, it was just a tool, you know. So we, we look at these through a much different lens than they would have been looked at, you know, at the time. The only you difference know, even between... when they were done racing, you know, they got put away and it was something that wasn't valuable to them until, you know... Until later, later on, until right. they all realized, wow. Right. Um, the difference between this and the modern day race cars is obviously that this just looks great. Whereas yeah. the modern day race cars, it's a lot less body, less sheet metal, less fiberglass. You know, I would say this is probably lighter than a lot of the modern day race cars that are out there. Yeah. Um, so from a, a performance standpoint, um, you know, this one maybe being a unique example with some of the older cars, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's very high performance. But from a safety standpoint, from, you know, the, the new cars are so much more digitized and have so many And they've got the row assistance. cages, which this does not right. have. Safety was, you know, an afterthought almost with these um, very, very dangerous cars. And what was the fastest speed recorded? Do we know that? Um, I, it was somewhere north of 230 miles an hour. Wow. wow. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you Thank again. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Bill, I love the setup you've got. I'm sorry. I love I'm this. hard of hearing. Okay, I can get closer. I love the setup you have. What do you have here behind you? What do you have here? What's your classic car? Uh, it's a Ford Fairlane 500 Galaxy Skyliner. And what year? 59. 59. Wow. I'm loving so many things about your Galaxy, but first of all, let's have a talk about the top. Okay. This is very unique. I haven't seen them like this before. Would you like to be put it on down in the trunk so you can see? Not yet. I actually want to keep seeing it like this. So, oh, okay. So this is how they came out in 1959. And was it on hydraulics or was it mechanical? It's electric over hydraulic. Electric over hydraulics. Yes. Okay. And wow. there was only 12,915 of these made in 59. And when did you get your hands on this one? I bought it two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Were you looking for the Fairlight? Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was on the uh, computer and I actually bought it through eBay. Through eBay? <laughs> there you go. Now, out of all the so many beautiful classics you could have had, why the Galaxy 500 for you? I had a re regular Galaxy 500 when I was in high school. Yep. And, and what it, happened to that one? As I got older, I, I traded it. I went into, uh, back then I was young, and the thing to get was a new car. Okay, I can you understand didn't want that. You old cars, you wanted new cars. Yes, but this one stuck with you. Yes. This one stuck with you. Well, has it been restored? Uh, partially. Partially, okay. Let's have a look here. And what was the engine in 59? Uh, it's a 332 Interceptor. Interceptor. Can we have a look at that? Sure. And that's the original engine rebuilt? Yeah, that's no, the original engine. No, it's not been rebuilt. It hasn't been rebuilt. Okay, wow. Got, uh, let me check my mileage here. I would love to find out how many miles this has because it looks like it's in really good nick. And by the wear and tear on the steering wheel, I think I can guess that the dash would be pretty original as well. Yeah, 68,000 miles. 68,000 miles. Original. Whoever the owners were, they looked after this. I'm sorry? Whoever the owners were, they looked after this. Yes. They kept it well. Right. Let's have a look inside, if you don't mind. Oh, OK. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. That's all right. Now, Bill, before we um, get inside here, the top, it goes all the way in. Yes, it folds on in and down in here. The whole top fits back in there and then the trunk lid closes over it. Can we see that happen? Sure. Okay. Let's have a look here. Now, I thought this is pretty original, the dash. Yes. Wow. 
59 Galaxy 500. Right. Wow, everything in here is original and we can tell by the wear and tear that it has seen. I love it. It doesn't get more better than this. Now you drive this around, Bill? Uh, I just drive it to shows. I, yep. I'll drive it once in a while, but not very often. That's understandable. Now, in order to put the top down, what do we have to do here? Just start the engine and it's ready to go. Oh, so when you start it, automatically it'll go down? No, I, I've got to pull the button. I'll let you go sit down in it and we can see what you do. Even our Miller Race car, the 122 up here, that's in front of our award stage. Very ahead of its time. I'm sorry? It's very, it was very ahead of its time. Yes. In order to have that mechanism happening the way it did and that smoothly as well. Did you have to restore that part of the car at all? Uh, I just had to replace the trunk bottom. That is it? That's it. Wow. The trunk bottom was rested and when the, you go to put it down, it would tilt sideways and get uh, stuck. Okay. So I had to have a new trunk put in, and now, you, as you see, it works good. You said hydraulics over... It's electric over hydraulics. Electric over hydraulics. So you can turn that off if you like. You want to okay. put it back up or...? Up to you. Let's have a look at that again as it goes up, everybody. 1959. I think it's very fitting to say that old is gold. Wow. I think I'll leave it about like that. Or I can, I can put it on down. <laughs> You know, Bill, that you steal the show wherever you go. <laughs> you can easily steal the show. I hope so. I, I think I think you do. I mean, everybody would love to see that in action, and the fact that it's coming from an absolute classic, it's just, it's amazing. Now, what I do want to know is, tell me about um, electronic over hydraulics. What does that exactly mean? I don't know. <laughs> love the honesty. <laughs> I just know how to pull the button. I love that. You know what? That will be me sitting down. I just know how to press this button. But hey, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. I appreciate it.